you know, probably didn't get enough touches. I mean, he had five shots in the game, but his game usually comes off of offensive rebounds. They don't have a lot of set plays for him. So it played out pretty much how I thought it was going to. Did you think that maybe Jalen Little got fouled at the end when he went to the rack? He almost had that bucket to. You know, I was on the opposite end of the court, so I'm <laughs> going to defer to the officials. They had a better shot, so. Well, we're going to turn our attention now to the 5A title game coming up between Arapaho and Chaparral. And the head coaches, Dan Snyder and Rob Johnson of the Warriors and the Wolverines, they chime in on the matchup. I think they have probably the most talent of any team in the state. And it's not just Josh and Corey. They have some other players that are terrific as well. So I think the challenge, again, in playing Chaparral is can you stop them? And those two, uh, again, I can't remember the last time a team in the state has had two Division I guards uh, on, this, on the same high school team. They're so well coached and they're so deep with skill. I mean, they're big guys got skill. Their guards are athletic in their skill and they lose their best player and they're still just pounding teams away. And it's because of that, the system they got and, they, and they're doing a great job. So they're, they may, they're worried, they're worried nobody wants to play them. You know, I don't know anybody wants to play them because how do you guard all those guys that can shoot? You got the fourth guy to come out and shoot, which kind of reminds us of us, but they're pretty strong. They're a little physically more strong than us, so we're, it's definitely a concern, yeah. Here's a look at how these two teams match up numbers-wise. Jerry, we heard Rob Johnson say Tim Haas is out. He was the leading scorer for Arapaho. They picked it up. Well, this is, that's the story of the tournament for me. Uh, I think everybody wrote them off when he got hurt late in the season, and Dan Snyder got to be credit for what he did and get this team together. We're going to talk about those Chaparral guards in Adams and Calvert. Best duo, obviously, in this. Is that an obvious comment? Well, obvious, and probably, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, and yeah. probably one of the best duos ever in Colorado, especially because of what they bring to the table. You know, Josh Adams is so athletic, and Corey Calvert's so cool under pressure. They really complement each other very, very well, and, you know, they play, to, they play off each other well, and you saw that the other night. Josh Adams struggling a little bit. Corey Calvert to the rescue. We just saw a 4A title game come down to a one-point final. What do you think happens here in the 5A title game? Well, I think it's going to be a similar type of game because Arapo has been a very good team at dictating their own tempo, and they they have been tremendous down low with Zach Coker and uh, Shane Jensen. Those two have really elevated their game since Tim Haas got hurt. But if it's close, you know, the Chaparral guards know how to close. And if it's close, I see Chaparral winning. Stay with us. Root Sports has been and is your ticket to state. We cannot wait for this 5A title matchup. Arapaho and Chaparral. We get it going next from Boulder.
Please enjoy the game without taunting and through the positive encouragement of your team. Throughout the year, the student participants in the Colorado High School Activities Association enjoy the benefits provided by the following annual corporate sponsors. Wilson Sporting Goods, First Bank, Farmers Insurance, The Sports Authority, Wallace Photography, Big O Tires, TriStar Industrial, IBM of Colorado, Echelon, Sport and Trophy, Orthopedic and Sport Medicine Specialist, Hello, hello. Yeah, there we go. Can um, do we have a thought before we go to the two guards or no? Okay, so we have a thought. And then we'll go to the two guards, and then we'll go to. Uh, hold on a second. Starts out with uh, Josh Adams and Court and. Tonight, the season comes down to this as two of the best in 5A boys basketball meet to decide a champion. Both teams come in number one seeds, but that's where their similarities end. For the Arapaho Warriors, their road to a state title has been one built upon resiliency. They lost their top scorer three weeks ago, but have marched on. Chaparral is led by one of the most athletic backcourt tandems in recent memory. Josh Adams and Corey Calvert run the Wolverine show. Both will go on to play D1, but tonight they hope to add state champions to their resume. Arapaho, Chaparral, the 5A state title game, next on Root Sports. We are set for the 5A Boys High School Basketball Championships in Colorado. The Arapaho Warriors and the Chaparral Wolverines. And here is how they arrived at the state title game. Arapaho knocked off Thunder Ridge in the round of eight. Beat Rangeview pretty convincingly to arrive at the championship game. And Chaparral after knocking off Columbine, beat Highlands Ranch in a very good basketball game in the semis to get to the state title game. Hi once again everybody with Seth Bonner. I'm Drew Goodman. These two schools clearly deserve to be here. Absolutely, both very, very talented, but you want to see some excitable players. The Chaparral team has two of them. You look over at Arapaho, that is a constant team machine. They get it done. Yes, they do. Let's start with the two guards you were referring to. They have a three-guard offense. All three are very good. We focus in on the two D1 kids. Josh Adams is going to Wyoming. A marvelous athlete. Corey Calvert, a terrific point guard headed to BYU. Absolutely. A heady guy who's real smart, understands how to get a shot off, can get to the basket. Really a guy that, that comes off the dribble. Great passer, but his forte is putting the ball in the basket. Shoots at a high percentage for as many shots he takes. Inside, outside, he gets a gun all over the floor. And when you talk about Adams, what an unbelievable athlete. I mean, this kid jumps out of the gym, and he's listed at six foot one. They may be fudging. That's stretching it a little bit. That's with some lifts in the shoes. He is a YouTube highlight machine. If this kid gets on a roll, it's going to be fun and exciting for the Chapel Road Wolverines. Well, Arapaho doesn't have any Division I kids. They just have a great system under Dan Snyder and a lot of really hard-nosed basketball players. We look in on two guys, Shane Jensen, who's 6'7", a tough cover, and Zach Coker, who does a little of everything. He really does. Both really skilled players. Since losing their leading player in Haas, they both stepped their game up. Jensen, a dominant big man inside and outside. He is a dominant player, a kid that is tough to guard because he can go off the dribble at six foot seven. Well, let's look at uh, Zach Coker and all the things he does. He can score the basketball, he defends, he rebounds. And you mentioned in the absence of Timmy Haas, who led the league in scoring, was the best player in that league. They have won seven straight. He's gone with a broken foot, and Coker's a big reason why. Absolutely. Coker, Coker very physical player, six foot four. 
understands how to play defense as well, gets the offense rolling. He is a solid player, and now some college will be very lucky to have him next year. This one, like the 4A game, could very well go down to the wire. Arapaho and Chaparral. The 5A state title game is up next. Come on back to Boulder with us. The high school basketball championships on Route Sports is brought to you by Subaru. We know how important it is to have a car you can love. And by the Credit Union of Colorado, proud to support Colorado communities. Course Event Center is rocking. And we're set for the 5A state championship. Arapaho and Chaparral. And Arapaho, one of the larger schools in the state, I think every student's here. They're out in full force. And Dan Snyder, one of the top coaches in the state, he lost his leading scorer, his MVP, Tim Haas, seven games ago. Evidently, no problem. And here's his starting lineup. Thomas Trotman, Zach Coker, Jack Bobzien, Evan Walsh, and Shane Jensen. Actually, a change in the lineup. Trotman will not start. He'll come off the bench. And Taven Sparks will start. He's a 6'3". 195 pounds, strong kid. Rob Johnson at Chaparral. He's done a terrific job, and he's been blessed with a great backcourt. Here's his three-guard lineup. Corey Calvert, Josh Adams, Brandon Malone's just a sophomore. He's a wonderful player. Reese Elliott and Will Keeser. Lyle Weiss. John Caracato and Mike Marcovecchio. And you know what, this is special for those gentlemen as well. Absolutely, they've earned their way into the state finals. That means their peers and have elected them here and they've got the pride to come here. And Here's the Adams, Bobsey goes down, Adams throws up a jumper. And that is a great side for Chaparral. He struggled shooting the basketball in the semifinal win over Highlands Ranch. They won at 54-50, but he was just 3 of 14. Absolutely, had a 1 of 10 stretch in that game. Evan Walsh can shoot the 3, and it is pulled down by Corey Calvert. And here's Malone up top firing. And the rebound to Bobsey. Walsh will fire again. 
No go. And the rebound underneath. And a foul. Zach Coker. I'll tell you what, that kid is hard. He just understands how to get it. I mean, he mixes it up. He's physical. He's a strong player. I mean, he had no business going in there getting that rebound. He went there and took it. 6-4 captain. Last two games. 22 points and 18 points to get a Rapaho here. He's their, one of their best free throw shooters at 80%. So a two to one ball game just underway. Arapaho beat Rangeview by 25 to get to the state title game. guards shoot the ball about 80% of the time. Malone hangs and hits. Pretty move by the sophomore. And we were impressed with him the other day. He hits a big control. Yeah, yeah, he's he in control. He hit some big shots in that fourth quarter when the game was being decided against Highland Ranch. Jensen is the guy that will be interesting to see how Chaparral handles it because he is very creative and he's long at six foot seven. That's he's got the layup. Bob Zine with the excellent pass. I don't know how that thing got through there, but that was a great pass by Bob Zine. Great hands to catch it by Jensen. Nice finish. Here's Adams. That's what he does. I mean, he is just a fabulous athlete. Freaky. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. The amount of explosion that is in this young man's legs. He's hit his first two. He started one for ten the other night. Six three. Here's Walsh to try again, and he knocks it down. He could flat out shoot it from three point range. He ties it up. Third time's a charm for Evan. He knocks down the three. And Malone does two pirouettes and goes outside. He just always seems like he's in control, Brandon Malone does. He doesn't get excited. Here's Adams feeling it. He is feeling it. He's got seven on three of three shooting. Coach Snyder talked about him being a streaky shooter. It's well documented. very methodical, very patient. Their whole deal is get a good shot. You're never wrong for taking the shot if it's a good shot. And that's why they have very balanced scoring a lot of nights. Absolutely. And they don't force anything. Good passing team. They don't turn it over typically much. There's the drive and a foul. Coker goes down hard. He was fouled. It was Will Kaiser. Yeah, I think it's Kaiser. Foul call on number 25, Will Kaiser. His first foul, team second foul. Could have shown a little bit early on that rotation, but a nice decision by Coker to just turn the corner and really go to the basket and try to finish at the rim. Thomas Trotman's going to come in. After the free throw. And that's the other thing about Coach Snyder. He will rotate and run guys in there at you. And he, he's, his statement to us was, if you you could play a whole game, you're not playing hard enough. So here's Trotman, who started for, Coker goes out. He started for Taven Sparks, who was under the weather in the semifinal game. Well, Sparks played. 9-8 ball game. He had to give that one up, and the jumper on the baseline goes for Will Kaiser. 49% shooter during the regular season. 11-8, Chaparral. It's a good sign. In production from the role players. Sparks drives and he missed the layup. Kind of tossed that one up there. You got to use the glass in that situation. 
Calvert goes cross court alone. And a rebound to Evan Walsh. 3.45 to go in the first quarter. 11-8, the Wolverines on top. And now they go to a 2-3 matchup. Jensen, well, he, can, he just scores the basketball. He's headed to Fort Lewis to play in the RMAC, which is a terrific basketball conference. Absolutely, they've got the number one team in Division II in School of Mines. Great basketball team. Calvert gives it up. Malone, not there. Good defense. And here's a three ball knocked down. It's Reese Elliott, who hit 40% from downtown during the season. And those role players off to a good start. And Chaparral overall Absolutely. is off to a terrific start shooting the rock. Jensen, he can step outside also. He's deadly. He averages 18 and a half a game. Hops, and it's batted outside. It'll be a loose ball foul on Kaiser, and that'll be the second on Kaiser. Chaparral, keep this in mind, played only six players in that four-point win in the semis over Highlands Ranch. 14-13. Chaparral by one. Chaparral shooting it well early. They're up one, 2.33 left in the first quarter. Time now for the Subaru keys to the game. Subaru built for wherever life takes you. Cedric Bonner, what do you have? Team defense. If you're a Rappahoe, you have to make other people beat you. Don't let Calvert and Adams beat you. If you're Chaparral, Elliott, Malone, and Kaiser have to step up when the ball's distributed to them. They've done that so far. All three of those young men are on the scoreboard. Guarding Calvert and Adams is far easier to write oh, oh, it is. than it, it is, is to Well, for me, yeah. anyway. <laughs> for me, anyway. I mean, I, I don't have to run around and chase those guys. No, this kid's pretty good, too. The sophomore, Brandon Malone. Adams with seven. Shane Jensen for Arapaho with seven. Thomas Trotman will bring it up the floor for the Warriors. Coker, good lob inside. Jensen had it knocked away, and then unfortunately Josh Adams couldn't retain possession. You're going to see a great job of help defense. The lob goes over the top, and watch this hops come over the top and just snag that ball out of the air. He was like lightning in a bottle, man. He's a highlight on every play. I looked him up on YouTube the other day. I mean, got more time than Jim Carrey has on uh, his last movie. <laughs> Here's Coker for three. And the rebound to guess who? Here's Adams. One man fast break and Evan Walsh reached in. I don't know in the past if he played football or 
baseball. He's been a one-sport guy of late in high school, but I'd love to see this kid on a football field. Absolutely, a safety receiver. I mean, he's quick, he's strong. Look at him, look at him just shove Trotman away. And just explosive, man. He is an explosive, explosive athlete. Mitch Parsons, he's a heck of a football player. He's been recruited by Colorado to play tight end. He's out on the floor, number 42. Trotman pulls down the rebound, and Coker with a, a great save. He drives, and he didn't get the roll. And there's the strong man, Parsons, with the rebound. 14-13, a minute and a half to go. And Calvert was fouled. Good more on Josh Adams for more Mark Stout. Mark? Guys, there's two things you can't miss about Adams, his leaping ability. Rob Johnson, the head coach, told me his vertical is 43 inches. His dad, Phil, was a high jumper of the highest caliber in northern Arizona back in the late 80s. In fact, he holds one of the top three outdoor high jumps at that school. You also can't miss the large tattoo on his upper left arm. It's a basketball. His brother went to Western State. Jordan left a couple of years ago. They are tight. They both got ink before he left. He plays basketball for the Mountaineers, and I'm sure he's here tonight rooting for Josh, guys. Well, that's, uh, that's been uh, a pretty good program over the years. In fact, my father-in-law and brother-in-law played up at Western. Gunnison, right? It's cold, so yeah. you know what you wear your sweats yeah, to practice. It's the coldest place in Colorado. Yeah. Very cold. Not looking to go. Three-point lead for the Wolverines. Walsh thought about it. That zone defense, Rob Johnson, come up with. And the three-point shot doesn't go for Walsh. Jensen tracked down the rebound. And now Coker. This is normally a really good shooting team and a reach-in foul. Taven Sparks called for the foul. Ooh, I thought it was a reach-in. It was actually on Sparks of Arapaho. Tough call. I think thought that was a great rebound by Sparks. Just a hustle play. Dan Snyder not pleased. Number 22, Austin Peterson. And number 23, now Austin Peterson comes into the basketball game. And Jack Bobzian comes back. Walsh and Sparks go out. Tough call. Bob Zine has the tough assignment right now on Adams. Coker, who's the best defender, is on Calvert. I can't believe watching Malone, who has a basketball, I can't believe said he's a sophomore. His decision making is incredible for a guy that young who just kind of understands. He's always composed. Yeah, never seems to get in trouble. Oh, great pass to Parsons. What a pass by Adams. Five-point Chaparral lead, five left in the quarter. Good ball movement, Jensen for three, and that'll do it. So a late run by Chaparral in a high-scoring first quarter. They'll take an 18-13 lead to the second quarter. It was the Josh Adams show in the first eight minutes.
Arapaho is here at full force, and they did some rehearsing, evidently. 18-13. Chaparral after one quarter. The Colorado High School Basketball Championship will be available on demand. Week on Chassa TV. Stop, pause, rewind your favorite plays, and fast forward through the rest only on Chassa TV. Well, in the, in the first quarter, Chaparral shot it well. 7 of 11. Dan Snyder's team just 4 of 12. Absolutely. 33%, and that's why they're down right now, but they're still in striking distance, so don't get worried. Well, they had good looks. They didn't go down, and Chaparral, those three guards, were terrific in the first eight minutes. Josh Adams has three field goals and five attempts. He had three field goals and 14 attempts in the semis. Into Jensen and a reach in on Adams. It's a good call. Time he come in and rake across the arm or slap down on the ball. They don't make that call. We're well, talking about the Arapaho students over here rehearsing. Every time the ball gets in Josh's hands, they're calling ball hog. So he's got those guys riled up over there as well. Jensen at 73% from the line. This is the front end. He had 19.7 rebounds, four blocks against Rangeview. And he misses both. Calvert with it. He's headed to BYU. Outside Adams. Quick release. Pretty shot. Adams is on fire. He's got 10, his second triple of the game. And it's an eight-point Chaparral lead. Came off a great pass by Malone. He was able to square up. And when he could square up and elevate, it looks as good as anybody's jumper. And I mean, he elevates on his jet. Jensen turns, and he is knocked down to the floor again. Watch how high Adams gets on his jump shot. See the good kick by Malone and just square it out. His perfect rotation on the ball. I mean, you can't draw it up any better than that. Look at that elevation. Jump straight up and down and, and buckets. You, you know, if you have... 43-inch hop. You know what that's called? Stupid hop. <laughs> I never had even close to that. That's incredible. Number 33, Evan Walsh. So Jensen, normally a good free throw shooter, has missed all three. That one felt better. 21-14, just uh, a minute or so into the second quarter. Calvert will pull up, tough shot, and Arapaho has the basketball. Looking to run, Coker and Bobzine. Coker stays with it, beautiful move. Zach Coker kind of lulled the defense to sleep after the initial burst. Absolutely, and, and curled around with the left hand finish. And Calvert unable to connect. Here's Bobzine driving, he gives it up and... Uh, Uncharacteristic there, he leaves his feet with that turnover. And now Bobsy trying to steal it back. Bobsy's a tough kid. He is. He's squaring up on Josh Adams. Dan Snyder told us the toughest guys they have in the program. Free ball. And that rolls home on the weak side. Will Kaiser. 24 16. Rappos already played eight players in the game. Here's Walsh for three. Rebound inside. It's Coker again. We told you he does a little everything. He's, he's a great player. Just kind of understands and is always in the right spot. Austin Peterson, good show on the other side of the screen. That's where you hedge out. And 
And is that going to count? Yes, it will. The outside official had an offensive foul. The inside official had the block. I tell you, this is a, a great job of hedging out here by Austin Peterson. He does a little bit late. He's a little bit late, but a good finish there. Has his right arm up, but his left arm is in that little arm bar position, which is what got him the foul. And Calvert completes the three-point play. Five for Calvert. Just his first bucket. He's made three free throws. You know, those guys, as talented as they are, they've made each other so much better in their four years that are at Chaparral because they're ultra competitive and they're beating on each other every day. Absolutely, Coach Johnson often splits them up, put them on different teams and makes them go at each other. And I tell you, it's attributed to their success on the season. I like what Coach Johnson's done here. He keeps uh, every couple of possessions thrown in that 2-3 uh, matchup zone. So you spell your guys just a bit, get them a little rest. And the uh, layup is missed by Coker. Nine-point Chaparral lead. Adams trying to tuck it, and it is an offensive foul. Crazy hops. If, if, if he doesn't lose this ball, this is going to be a dunk. That's two on Adams. Look at the explosion, and once nobody steps up. But, that, I mean... Not an offensive foul. The defender jumped with him. Tried to go up with him. He has the right to his space. But, I mean, you rarely see that called when the defender leaves his feet. Adams has to be careful. Four and a half to go in the second quarter. He's got two fouls. Jensen. And he is fouled on the rebound attempt. Jensen's kind of crafty, isn't he? He's just silky smooth, slinky, 6'7", so he's long. I think he's a little bit longer than some of these guys realize. That is the seventh foul on Chaparral, so it's a one and one. Kane Jensen to the line. That's a stroke he's been looking for. Here's something to help Chaparral in this game. Normally in a high school game, there aren't TV timeouts. When you're playing only six, those TV timeouts yeah, are huge. They help, and it just gives him a, a couple of minutes as well as throwing, dropping back into those two, three zones. And you're not supposed to be watching those, but it does give you a little break from chasing guys around all over the place. Calvert, as a freshman, spent one day at Regis and decided that he wanted to uh, go to Chaparral. They welcomed him with open arms. <laughs> Regis has a great basketball program, the 5A state champs a year ago. And Malone leans in and hits with his left hand. Well done. Just a sophomore, folks. And look at, I mean, his facial expression never changes, no matter the situation. Very composed for a 10th grader. Passing lane. He wants the breakaway. Poker for three. Arapaho needed that in the worst way. That's a good job of squaring up and being ready to shoot when the pass came. Got the pass on time in rhythm. Poker he'll, with he'll knock that down. Adams uh, gets tripped up by Bob Zeen. Two free throws coming when we come back. Here's the pretty move by Malone. 29-23 after this. Coker, Chaparral by six. Late stages, quarter number two.
you're not going to replace a guy completely that's the leading scorer in the league. And so we understand that, and we've tried to be a little bit more defensive-oriented. We still push the ball in transition, uh, but we're a little more patient, I would say, in our half-court offense. And then we've asked everybody has to step up their game a little bit. On the right of your screen is Timmy Haas, who led the league in scoring. He's an All-State caliber player, better than 20 a game. He had 40 in a game this year, 33 in another game. He has missed the last seven games with a broken foot. And Dan Snyder addressed that issue with us yesterday. You're not going to replace a guy completely that's the leading scorer in the league. And so we understand that, and we've tried to be a little bit more defensive-oriented. We still push the ball in transition, uh, but we're a little more patient, I would say, in our half-court offense. And then we've asked, everybody has to step up their game a little bit. I like how he dresses. I, you know, we'd rather see him in shorts. He's worn a bow tie Dude, to every single galore. basketball Look at that. game. Colors galore. That is. This isn't just for the nice. state title game. He's done that. Again. Do you think he can tie it himself? It's impressive if he can. So I, 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 can you can you tie a bow tie? No, I usually flip one. <laughs> well, Mark Staff did a little research on that, Mark. He absolutely can tie that bow tie. Here's what he told me. He wanted to wear a bow tie to the winter formal. He went to YouTube, typed in how to tie a bow tie. I did that today. There's one guy that's got over two million hits. That's where he learned how to tie it. And like you said, he's worn it to all the playoff games. He loves it. <laughs> that, that's very interesting. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta do some work and get showing up by an 18 year old. Resilient. 31 23, Chaparral by eight. They have shot it splendidly here in the first half. Jensen off the glass and in. He's got a dozen. You pointed this out during the commercial break. It's kind of a role reversal. Jensen has 12, Coker has 10 for Rappel. The only other guy with points is Walsh at a three. Every player who's played for Chaparral has scored. And that's an easy one from Kaiser. He's got seven. 33-25. Out of bounds off Malone as Taven Sparks missed. Sparks, a strong kid. He'll be the quarterback for Arapahoe's football team in the fall. He'll be throwing the spear around. And he can't throw it. Jensen outside. Bob Zeno will reset. Inside two minutes to go in the first half. Jensen again. So he's got that kind of European game where he can step outside the three-point lane and hit it. But he's also crafty enough to work his way down and use his body position and both hands to get the ball up to the basket. Here's a three ball. Looks good. It is. Reese Elliott's second triple of the ball game. Chaparral cannot miss. Coker trying to answer. Bob Zine. Now Coker on the block. And the rebound off to Chaparral's Malone. Calvert. And which way? Offensive foul. That's on Calvert. Got a little out of control on that. You get a look at Reese Elliott. His first foul. With his second triple of the game. Oh, that's a tough call. They're both moving. Bob Dean kind of gave me the old the cross shoulder in there with the check. I'll tell you what, for Chaparral, it's not only that everybody scored, everybody has at least two buckets with the exception of Parsons, who has one. Poker from 16. 
Shot goes 15, and Adams <laughs> upstairs. And we mean upstairs, look out. <laughs> You've got to stop the ball. Shane Jensen had his back turned running down the court. You never stop the ball. You don't want to be a spectator with him on the floor. Absolutely not. You'll get put on a poster. And there's a turnover. Calvert has it. Bob Zine back. And Calvert misses the layup. Trotman has it. 18 seconds left. Numbers for Arapaho. Jensen would have had a three-point opportunity. 11-point Chaparral lead, Josh Adams. Stop the basketball, stop the basketball. Oh, get out of the way. What a, I mean, just explode, look at just running down the middle, nobody stops the ball. And I think he might have been shocked. Isn't that how you used to finish? Oh, absolutely, without question. But I was 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", he was, he's six feet. 6-1 at most. This kid's got unbelievable hops. Again, headed to the University of Wyoming. Play for Larry Shiat. There's Parsons. Lost a little weight. He played football this fall around 240. He's down around 230. 6-4 tight end. Jensen gets it back. And he leans in, and it turns into a three-point play. Eight-point game. Here's Adams. He can shoot his jumper from anywhere. That was a conventional jump shot, more or less, from half court. What a first half for Chaparral. And Josh Adams, the Wolverines, 38. The Arapaho Warriors, 30, said. Shane Jensen's been unbelievable, 17 points. He's dominating. Coker got 10 points but they're not getting any help from any of the other players it kind of talked about role reversals chaparral as a team is playing unbelievable they cannot miss a shot they've got great balance rob johnson's with mark staff their head coach thanks guys rob you are up eight any concerns despite the lead uh you know we got a little bit of foul trouble we got to worry about and uh, the thing that we knew was going to be a problem was boxing out they're pretty physical they get the ball pretty well on the offensive board so as you can see right there, it should have been a 10-point lead. So uh, we got to worry about those things. But also with that rebounding, it allows us to run. And you can see how we run well. So that's that's our main deal. And today your team can shoot the basketball. That's shoot well, yeah. And we know we can do that. And uh, But again, it's getting out and running and penetrating and kicking out to those guys like Reese and letting us do that. So there's some mismatches they're having a hard time with. With our guards, number 23, Malone's having a good he's getting He's getting open and clear a lot and creating a lot of things for us. So it's been really nice to have that. Thanks, Coach. All right, All right, Mark, thanks very much. Rob Johnson grew up playing at Sirocco High School for his dad just outside Steamboat, Colorado. And as the head coach of Chaparral, he sounded pleased, and he ought to be. His team's up by eight at the break in the 5A state championship game. Tavis, I got the story on. Everybody come on in. I want to have, make our last practice really good. Yeah. Um, so how many years was it, Tavis, again? Okay. I don't have those scores. I'm going to need those in between, right? Yeah. All right.
Chaparral feeling it. They're dancing like these dancers with a eight point halftime lead here in the 5A title game. Welcome back inside, I'm Mark Stout. Dick Caddy has been coaching for the last 48 years at Denver Christian. He is retiring after this year and he's in the finals of 2A here tonight. We thought we would interview him and talk to him about his career, but we figured, you know what? Let's have Dick Caddy tell his story himself. Everybody come on in. And I want to have, make our last practice really good. Remember last week how good your practice was? I mean, the game before we went and played our regional was maybe the best practice we had. Well, tonight, I want you to top that, if that's possible, okay? Go! Hurry, Chris, get! Now, under control! Oh, you did it! When I started out, basketball was a more important part. And then as I grew older, I said, no. I want them to know what life is about and have basketball be a part of that. Good, good job. I used to see a t-shirt that said basketball is life. And I never liked that. Be intense, suffocating defense, remember. Life after basketball is what I'm concerned. And I think what really helped me to learn that, to know that the life of a young man doesn't have to be all basketball, I think is really important as they move out into the world. Way to get a hand up, nice shot, way to go. I think we built a really strong program. The community aspect where I have players and then sons of players and that kind of feeling. That was perfect. You're over there hot dogging it and the man's wide open here. It's very enjoyable, first of all, because that son goes home and hears from that, oh, he didn't do that when I was playing for him. And in many ways, they say I was more of a disciplinarian when I was younger and now maybe more understanding. But in general, I would have to say for those parents, they have been very happy that their son could have the same experience they had. Well, you're getting much better at making good choices. Way to go, Carter. You don't force it. Way to go. I've been blessed because there have been some good players. Now, not stars, but they really bought into, we play team basketball. So we've never had a Division I player, but they've all liked the game of basketball, but they like it to be good teammates. And this team that I have this year probably personifies better that team concept. They are good teammates. This is gonna be a memorable weekend, and I give you this reminder, and that is, I think the season proved that you were the best team in 2A basketball. But the best team doesn't always win the state championship. I'm approaching the final games of a season. I don't think the final games of the career is going to be real until all of a sudden I'm supposed to start up again, and I don't. Trying to cover everything for you. Way to talk, Connor. Yeah. I've always been responsible to teach my students my players about life after, life after school, high school, life after basketball, and can you take those lessons and apply them? Well, I'm gonna have to do that myself now and see if all the words I've told others I can live by. Take a good shot now, yeah! That's what I'm trying to accomplish, good work. Great coach, better man. Thanks to Credit Union of Colorado for giving us a closer look at Dick Caddy Become a Credit Union of Colorado member. Find out how today at cuofco.org. You look at his numbers. 875 career wins. He's coached his son and his grandson. And he is in the 2A finals here tonight. We'll have an update on that championship game and some other championship scores when we come back. Halftime of the 5A title game in Boulder. Chaparral with an eight-point lead over Arapaho.
wants you to feel totally good about yourself. I just got a text from my friends at the Kansas State tournament. The Six Day Boys game, they had 70 free kicks. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the leading scorers for tonight's game. game. That would have been to do basketball or to watch the general. Leading goal scorers with 17 points. Shane Gibson and Rebel High School. Arapaho fans looking on, their Warriors trail by eight. It's only halftime of the 5A title game. Let's go around the state and show you some of the scores from the championship games that have happened today. Earlier here at Boulder, what a game between Lewis Palmer and Sierra. The Rangers won it by one, Josh Scott. Their big man coming here to see you led the way with 23. Faith Christian, they're good at everything, and they're leading after three in the 3A final. We move to the 2A final. Dick Caddy's Denver Christian Crusaders tied with Lyman, and Kalichi with a six-point lead, a tenuous lead after three in the 1A state championship. Well, Chaparral has shot 67% thus far in the game. Every Wolverine that's played, they're on the score sheet, and they've got an eight-point lead. Stats and highlights from the first half when we come back. Five A state championship at the break. Chaparral 38, Arapaho 30. And back at the scores table. I suppose it's the scores table. With uh, Cedric Bonner, I'm Drew Goodman. Chaparral shot at 67% in the first half. You shoot at 67% for a game, you win. Uh, no, without question. I mean, can they continue that hot streak? You know Arapaho's going to be there in the end. They're going to stay patient, do what they do. But right now, it's looking like Chaparral is headed for that trophy. Well, Arapaho got uh, a lot of help from Shane Jensen in the first half, but Josh Adams, who struggled shooting at the semis against Highlands Ranch, did not struggle in the first half. Absolutely, five of seven from the floor. It was just electric. You see a stop and pop on a three-pointer, and then you've got to stop the ball, especially when that guy has his hands on it. Human highlight reel, and then you go Shane Jensen on the other end. Right. 17 points, six of eight shooting, but all over the court, inside, outside, can spot up and hit the shot, but the leaping leaner, as my man Chick Hearn used to say, hits a leaping leaner, gets the buckets to go. Look at that. Slinky 6'7", six, seven, six, seven, silky smooth, well, top-notch player. He'll need to continue that in the second half. Now, Arapaho has a reputation as a great shooting team. 40% won't get it done, especially if the other team's hitting two-thirds of their shots. Absolutely, and, and what has happened is Chaparral came out with a high-intensity defensive level. Can they continue that the entire half and try to get that trophy? Wolverines by eight over the Warriors. We'll come back with the third quarter next.
Great crowd at the Coors Event Center in Boulder, nearly 11,000. And the 5A state title game has been most entertaining. 38-30, Chaparral leading Arapaho. Arapaho is coached by Dan Snyder, and a couple of moments ago, our Mark Stack caught up with him. Thanks, Drew. Coach, are you happy with the looks you've had in the first half shooting line? We are. We think our shot selection is good. Now, we just have not hit the shots. So that's been problem number one. Uh, but we are happy with the looks we've gotten. We've missed too many layups. We've missed a number of free throws, too, which is not good. Are those problems number two or three, or is there more on the list? Well, I think the biggest problem is actually at the other end of the court, defensively. They're shooting an astronomically high percentage. Some of that is because they have tremendous players. We think some of that's because our defense isn't quite where it needs to be. We've given up 38 points in the first half. If we continue at this pace, that's going to be hard, meaning if they score 76 points, I don't think we can catch them. So we have got to shut that down. Now, if they, I'm told they hit five out of seven threes. Well, you know, you can do that math. That's an incredibly high percentage on their threes. So we think they'll cool off a little bit. On the other hand, they're pretty great players. Luck in the second half. Thanks, appreciate it. Back to Drew. All right, Mark, thank you. Shane Jensen and Zach Coker at double figures. Adams with 14, and they heat up again. Reese Elliott. Reese Elliott has hit three triples. Good what, job what, what did Coach Snyder say? If they, if they keep shooting that percentage. That astronomical number. And it is. They're six of eight from downtown. Backdoor cut. These basketball. Bob Zine up with it. And Jensen is fouled. So you got the foul. Are they giving it to Adams? Yep. It's if third. it's Adams, it's his third. It is. That's number three. That's huge. If he just goes straight up, you see right there, he's got his hand on the ball, but when they see your hand come down, so you can't believe he's in disbelief. He had his hand all over the ball, but anytime you come down like that, they're going to make that call. Jensen's been terrific, but he's missed four free throws. Highly uncharacteristic. Yeah, he's four of eight. They're going to have to get scoring elsewhere. Just three players on the, in the books for Arapaho. Look at Taven Sparks giving it up. Great effort. Great effort, and he's going to get rewarded. They'll get the basketball. Eleven point lead for Chaparral, their largest of the basketball game. Bobzin leaves it for Jensen. And now Coker. Which way? Same way. It's tight, tight window there. For Chaparral. You don't want to give this many opportunities to a dormant offensive team. You gotta, you gotta shut them down and go the other direction and get points. Walsh for three, and the uh, basketball comes away to Malone. So again, Arapaho icy cold. Here's a long three from Calvert, and it's Adams with the rebound. Still loose. Adams goes down. He got hit in the head. He's still on the deck. Now getting up at the other end, and the timeout is called. Rob Johnson's incensed. He thought Adams got fouled inside. He got thrown down to the ground. And then out in the middle, out in the middle of everybody. Keep an eye on them. They're all going up for the ball. The ball's scrambling around. But right there, you see Jensen just kind of throw him down. Grabs him by the shoulder. And just kind of hook him down to the ground. I mean. Well, it wasn't a timeout call. The officials called timeout. Jensen leaves in, gets his own rebound, and lays it home. So somebody needs to come along with Jensen. And another jumper knocked down. That's inside three-point range. It was Will Kaiser. He's got nine. Chaparral is putting on a shooting clinic. 43-32, the Wolverines are up by 11. 
again, another kick from Brandon Malone, and Kaiser just knocks it down and in rhythm. And we talked about in the in the 4A championship, kids not being afraid to fail. And these, these kids have come out here, throw caution to the wind. They're just playing loose, putting it up, you know, knocking down shots. You know, said you're absolutely right. It, it, coming into this ball game, the three guards, the triumvirate of Adams, Calvert, and the sophomore Brandon Malone had scored 52 of their 70 points on average this year. But tonight, Reese Elliott's got nine on three triples. Will Kaiser's got nine. In fact, Calvert has just five points, one field goal and, and three free throws. He's, he's more in facilitator mode right now, getting the ball to guys that need it. And you know he's going to be, be ready to hit some clutch shots if he needs to. Let's see if Arapahoe can respond. Side to Jensen. He's been Arapaho's most entire offense. Walsh gets an offensive rebound and he puts it back home. That's a nice job by Evan Walsh. I don't think he does enough of that. Good size, good rebounder. He needs to get down in there. And he's got length. He's six foot Absolutely. five. It's Donnie Walsh's grandson. That's short and Sparks goes upstairs for the rebound. Needs a guard. Arapaho will not panic. They'll keep running their patterns. Oh, so they won't get out of character. Coker out of the corner. Big three from Zach Coker. He's got 13, and it's a six-point game. Great kick out there by Jensen. He has the hot hand, but he's unselfish. He makes the extra pass. Big three by Coker. Adams cuts to the basket, and he lost the basketball. Coker down the lane, and it is an offensive foul. Tough call. Nice job of stepping in by Reese Elliott, who to me has been the MVP of the game. Knocked down three threes. He's playing, he's undersized, playing a, a taller man down in the post on every possession. He's going up against Jensen, making him work hard for his shots. Three personals on Sparks. Now Rappaho is going to pressure in the backcourt. 43-37. Look at Dan Snyder, the head coach at Arapaho. He was an assistant for a while under Mike Dunlap at Metro State. That's where he cut his teeth and won the game. I could listen to him talk for hours, man. He's such an elegant speaker. And very successful businessman and always wanted to get into high school coaching. Head coach of Heritage for a little bit. And uh, last six years at Arapaho. And that is an offensive foul called on Calvert. This is a good call. He tries to go through three guys. And there's really nothing. He's got nothing going there with a short, small lead, six-point lead. Keep the ball outside, get something better. There's always a better shot. Coker cut off by Malone on the baseline. Bob Zane, a three ball, and he's got one. And all of a sudden, it's a three-point game, and here comes the Arapaho faithful. It's a first point other than Jensen Coker or Walsh to score for a rap -over. Huge bucket by tough as nails, Jack Bobzine. And what happened from my perspective was a who could be uh, a very physical team, 
got exceptionally physical benefit of uh, a couple of no calls and now at the other end they're starting to hit shots absolutely and it's starting to, to make plays taking charges and a rap, uh, excuse me chaparral being very careless with their decision making down on the other end you know wow. sometimes you get that lead you start kind of uh, i'm going to try something i'm going to try this they, they're not playing as sharp as they were well rob johnson is telling us yesterday he said arapaho is so well coached he said they're a machine he said they have a million sets they're tough to prepare for and then the last thing he added he said they're extremely strong and physical very strong and physical and, and that's the thing they're not going to get out of their game plan we talked about that they're going to do what they do well you continue to go 68 percent from the floor congratulations good on you you're the state champions, but they feel they could stop it with their play. And, and, and Dan Snyder, conversely, told us yesterday, he said, listen, Chaparral athletically, they're better than us. He said they're, they're two guards. He said really their three guards are phenomenal. They're a handful. And so far in this game, they have dictated the pace of play and the, and the excellence, if you will, of what the Wolverines have accomplished so far. But now we see how they, they respond because it's an 8-0 run by Arapaho. And absolutely, and guys that are confident in their system and what they're doing, they're continuing to play. They just need a few more guys to step up and make a few plays for them. Good ball screen by Parsons. Here's Adams. He doesn't need a screen. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Boxy. Pull up for three. Doesn't get the roll, and the basketball comes to Walsh. He loses it inside, out of bounds, off of the Wolverines. Time out on the floor. Arapaho in the midst of an 8-0 run. They were down 11. It's 43-40 in the 5-8 title game. Good basketball game here in the 5A state title game, 43-40 Chaparral. The Colorado High School Basketball Championships will be available on demand in its entirety starting next week on Chassa TV. And you can stop, pause, rewind your favorite plays, do whatever you want. It's only on Chassa TV. Big congratulations to one of the great high school coaches in the history of the state of Colorado, really nationally, Dick Cotty and Denver Christian beat Lyman in a good ball game, 54-50. In 48 years of coaching for Dick Cotty, his eighth state title. So every six years he wins a state title. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good average, and I think, I mean, it, a great tradition there with his programs. He talked about coaching fathers and sons. And, and, and maybe grandsons. Oh, awesome. He is retiring after 48 years and 876 wins. Dick Cotty, well done. Coker drives, lays it up, a 10-0 run. It's a one-point game. 15 for Coker, who has yet to decide if he's going to play college basketball. We have a, an idea for you. Go play. Absolutely. 
Bob Teen with the foul. It's just a nice decision. Good up fake. Goes strong to the bucket and finishes. I mean, he's such a sound player. It's good quality decision. Really a tremendous story. You lose you lose a guy averaging almost 21 a game. Who, who shot 44% threes and hit 70% of his twos. Then you ask your, your guy that's averaging 12 a game, I need you to up your ante. And he does just that. One point game, 2.15 to go in the third quarter. The Chaparral answer. Parsons with it, over to Calvert. Malone, a good look. And he's gonna chase down his own rebound. And now it's Calvert. Loose ball foul, is it on four? It is. Adams has just bought his fourth. Very emotional player, he's gotta be careful. He's gonna get teed up and thrown out He's gotta be careful. And this is clearly an over the back call. He comes flying in out of nowhere. And he's gonna check out for it's the first call. time in the game. It's a good call, he needs to control his emotions or he's gonna be out of this game. That's his fourth foul. And remember folks, technicals do count in high school for. And, and you know what, those officials did a marvelous job. They're aware of that, they knew it was his fourth. And I think if it's regular season, he would have bought a T to be honest with you. Absolutely, they're gonna let him blow a little steam off. And I understand a lot of emotion. This is a state championship game. Good Some job by Rob Johnson. People. Right, good, good job by Rob Johnson. Get him on the bench for a couple of moments. Let him compose himself. He's a great kid. Dan Snyder was raving about what kind of kid he is. Arapaho can emotion. take the lead here, and they will. Unbelievable. They look like they were on the verge of getting blown out a few minutes ago. But what do we talk about? They're gonna do what they do. And I, I guarantee you that shooting percentage that was so high for Chaparral has dropped down to around 49%. Well, they, they got good looks a moment ago, but inevit you just can't, inevitably you can't shoot 67, 70%. And like I said, if you do, good on you. That's gonna be four on Taven Sparks, one of the top defenders for Arapaho. And that's just a great curl right there by Shane Jensen. Good pass. And Mitch Parsons not really understanding the curl right there. He's not forcing Jensen out of the spot. Jensen's going to any spot he wants down on the other end. And nice touch by Calvert at the line. His sixth point. Trotman's going to come back. Bob Zien goes out. And Sparks goes out in favor of Austin Peterson. Bob Zien had that big three at a crucial moment. Part of that run, that 10-0 run. Calvert said he was struggling from the free throw line. He went 8 of 8 in the semi, 6 of 6 in crunch time in the final minute. He's 5 of 5 tonight. That doesn't look like somebody who's struggling from the line. He's upset because he's touching a little iron. Yeah. And and you know those shooters, they want to they wanna hear some... Which way? It'll go to Chaparral. So you look at sophomore stepping his game up. I love He's been kind of quiet. You know, he, he defers a lot as well. We watched him the other night deferring. But he just makes good play after good play. And you see there on the defensive end, he gets the steal. Thirty seconds left in the third quarter. Chaparral by a point, 45-44. They were up 11 on two occasions early in the third. They're going to try to hold on for the final look of the quarter. Calvert wants the ball screen, gets it from Elliott. Elliott, good look for three. He's got his fourth of the game. Right in front of the horn. And the third quarter. 48-44, so Chaparral has come back to score the final five points of the third quarter. But the story of the third, the run by Arapaho to get back in the game. We'll go to the fourth 
48-44, Wolverines. Oh, what a beautiful scene in Boulder at the Coors Event Center. The 5A state title game. The joints jumping. Nearly 11,000 in attendance. Chaparral leading by four as we go to the fourth quarter. Chaparral has cooled off slightly. Arapaho has really picked it up offensively. Second chance points. Look at the bottom category set. That is incredible. Rebounding as well. 19 to four edge for Arapaho. 13-0 on the second chance points. That's why they're back in this ball game, but hold the door. Chaparral ends the half with a 4-0 run, a 5-0 run, excuse me. And Josh Adams is back on the floor, number four, with four fouls for Chaparral. They go to his zone. I go right to right at him if I'm a rapper. I try to get him. Walsh long three. And the rebound to Trotten and bodies on the ground. Jensen trying to take advantage. Runner up and in. Two-point game. Shane Jensen with 23. He's got such a good touch around the basket and in the lane. Coker guarding Calvert, who's headed to Provo to play his college basketball. Trip. Yeah, he got tripped or somehow lost his footing. He got tripped up. Arapahoe could tie. Ward take the lead again. Jensen, three ball, that's wrong. And Adams on the run out. There's that guy again. Maurice Elliott, you called it at the top of the broadcast. He said, somebody else needs to step up for Chaparral. That man's been Reese Elliott, he's got 14. He's been huge, four for four from three point range. And Walsh makes Comes it a one ball. point game. His second triple. Time out on the floor, 50-49. What more could you want? We had a great 4A final. Lewis Palmer by a point over Sierra. And Arapaho and Chaparral. One point separates these two early in the fourth. Here's Adams finding his buddy Reese Elliott, the 6'4 senior. He throws it down. That's just a great outlet pass. Good job of having his head up, and seeing what's going on. Reese Elliott slips out on the run out. 
I want to tell you something quickly, folks at home. Reese Elliott, three, four in the classroom, well-rounded, does a ton in the community. These schools are so well represented. The starting five tonight for Arapaho, here are the GPAs. Coker, 3-9, Walsh, 3-7, Jensen, 3-6-3, Bob Zine, 3-8, Taven Sparks, 4.02. There's no one under a 3-0 for the Arapaho Warriors. That is incredible. But that's why Coach Snyder puts a lot on those young men, a lot of understanding. Calvert, good D by Coker, better shot by Calvert. You told me during the last commercial break, you said Calvert's gonna need to make a shot or two. He that's, just did. That's about as tough a shot as he's gonna have right there. He just keeps going. It's really good defense. He turns the corner off the curl here. Coker's playing great defense and he kind of jumps up through him. That's really good defense there by Coker, but a better shot as you say to by yep. a score, they a Olympic score. They lob into Jensen. Jensen trying for the okie doke and a foul. It's on Elliott. That'll be the second on Reese. He's just so crafty around the basket. He's you know, patient too, he as really they said. Is. He's like, like Tony Kukoc or one of those guys that has the outside inside game. Just takes his time, doesn't change his pivot feet. I thought you made a nice analogy. You said he, he, he's got a lot of Euro in his game. Absolutely. Which there's nothing wrong with because those guys are dominating the league. Jensen aspires to be a dentist one day. Again, he'll play collegiately down in Durango, Fort Lewis. Let's get a little more on Shane Jensen from Mark Stout. Interesting observation, guys, about him having a Euro feel. His favorite player, Danilo Gallinari of the Nuggets. And he's also a guy that's a little silly, a little goofy, but Dan Snyder said he's good-natured. He said that he was a soccer goalie and an inline hockey goalie. And I didn't know whether he was serious, but he was. That's and a backboard violation. Well, I don't think Chaparral thinks he's real goofy. No, they think he can score. They think he could score the basketball, 25 points. He is having his way this evening. Five and a half left in the fourth quarter. Chaparral by one. Arapaho beat Chaparral in the round of 16 in the state playoffs last year. And Dan Snyder, after that game, was talking to his coaching staff. He said, those guys are going to be incredible next year. Loose basketball. Here's Chaparral with it. Nice defensive play. Good help side rotation. Now those shots that were going up earlier. Now they're a little more prudent with the ball, taking their time. And well, this is where Calvert goes down, and they're going to tie him up. And no, good job by they, Josh Adams with the timeout. They got a timeout called. I think these officials have done a great job in not blowing the whistle too quick. Yeah, that wasn't a trip. That was just a stumble. His legs just kind of gave out from underneath. But him. a lot of times you see that call to travel immediately. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You go with the ball to the ground. Nine times out of ten, they're going to make that travel call. Let's take a look at the guard numbers. The two terrific guards, Calvert. Averaging 21 a game, basically has nine. Josh Adams got most of his 14 early. He came out on fire in that first quarter. Absolutely, and, and has really calmed down and got in trouble. He had seven in the first and really got in trouble after that foul trouble. Third quarter, spent a ton of time on the bench and hasn't really been in the flow, but thank goodness for them. They've got Reese Elliott to save the day. He's almost doubled his scoring average from the regular season. Eight points during the regular season. He's got 14 here in the state title game. 447 left, 52-51, Chaparral. Adams, in fact, has not scored in the second half. Here's Elliott. 
And That's a, foul. a great job by Elliott to turn the corner and get Jensen on the reach in. And you know what? He's going to take a 90% stroke to the line. I'll tell you what, he turns the corner, nobody shows right here. Great decision with the left hand. Takes it to the rim, and Jensen has to reach in. He doesn't get over in time. He has to reach in to make him earn him from the free throw line. First foul on Jensen. 15 for Elliott. 6 4 C. He can play, though. Overshadowed by those two guards. He can absolutely play. And it, it, it just seems like he came out tonight with his mind made up that he was going to be a big time contributor. Tough pass. Jensen with the good hands. And here's Adams. Got to beat Troutman. He will. Big turnover, a rare turnover. Five point lead for Chaparral. Adams, first bucket, second half. Coming up on the four minute mark. They double down, and the shot's missed, and then a foul. And Jensen will go to the line for the 12th and 13th time in the game. Adams a steal, and the finish. 56-51, Chaparral. 3.52 left in the fourth. Chaparral leading by five, 3.52 remaining in the fourth quarter. Free throws coming for Shane Jensen of Arapahoe. Hockey fans, Root Sports is your home for the WCHA Final Five. We'll bring you the quarterfinals beginning Thursday at 1 and take you all the way up to the championship game next Saturday night at 6, live from the Excel Energy Center in St. Paul. It's the best in college hockey right here on Root Sports. DU lost last night to Wisconsin in the best out of three. They lead Wisconsin right now, two to one in game two. Do you have a bubble team right now? It's been a roller coaster ride for George Grozdecki's team. That uh, game, two to one in the third period over at Magnus Arena. A great movie to watch if you can watch a hockey game. I mean, I, pretty good to watch Joe Scott's basketball team play also. So you don't you don't hear them being a bubble team ever. No, you don't. I mean, Jensen's got 26 in the game. Those were his best uh, free throws of the night. Took a little more time, makes it a three-point affair. The senior point guard, Corey Calvert, will bring it up. It's a good show there by Evan. Elliott wants to set a ball screen. Oh, wow. Foul on Coker. 
That gets Dan Snyder out of his chair. Uh, tough call there. That was pretty good defense by Coker, and you see it. Tough call. Not a lot there. He dribbles the ball off his foot. Elliott, long three. In and out. How do you there's leave him open? How do you leave Elliott open? That's the first time he's missed from downtown all evening. And it was all the way in and out. 56-53, Chaparral. He's working clock right now. Adams with it. And Bobsy with the foul. And that is the seventh on the Warriors. It's a one and one coming up. And Adams, pretty good free throw shooter. 77% on the line. Absolutely, but these situations are unlike any that you've been in. This is a pressure situation. And if you're a rap hole, the good news is the clock is stopped. So I think this kid loves these situations. He calmly knocks it down. This guy's a gym rat to the eighth power, man. So why do you think he doesn't play any other sports? Right. I mean, he just lives it, breathes it. Goes one for two. Four-point game. Coker hands off to Trot. Still plenty of time. 245. Three ball. Knocked out by Coker. Big time. And a timeout of Rapaho. It's a one-point game. Coker's got 18. It's been a two, pretty much a two-man show as they run the curl. They've combined for 42. Coker and Jensen. And, and just a nice dish over there. Good job of squaring up, making this pass. You see Evan Walsh gets it here. Squares up. Good down screen by Jensen. And Coker nails it. That is a clutch, clutch three. How, how well played is this game? Through three quarters, Arapaho had three turnovers. Chaparral had three turnovers. Uh, that's, that's remarkable. When you get into this game, the kind of emotion that's involved with it, the kids to be that focused where they take care of the basketball and make sure these possessions count. And a reminder, if you're just jumping on board, Chaparral early in the third opened up an 11-point lead on a couple of occasions, and the way they were shooting it, it looked like they were going to run away and hide. Absolutely. And, and we talked about the Warriors from Arapaho just staying within their within themselves and doing what they do. Slowly but surely, a couple, a couple missed shots here and there, a couple steals, and next thing you know, we got a tight ball game, which is where we sit right now. Arapaho has won 18 straight, 25 and two entering the title game. Rob Johnson, Chaparral, Wolverines, 24 and three. for dangerous pass. So we break the trap. 2.15 left. One point game. Seven fouls on Arapaho. Five. Turnover. Where, where are you going? Where are you, why are you forcing the issue down that side? There's nowhere to go there. That is such a tough play to try to make. I mean, there's really nothing there. You know if you get in the corner, they're gonna trap you down there anyway. There's nowhere to go. Stay in the middle of the court where you have some space to work either way. Arapaho can retake the lead. Coker off to trot. That's a shot Evan normally knocks down right there. Okay. 
into Jensen, and an offensive foul. That's drawn by Reese Elliott, who's done everything in this title game for Chaparral. Back-to-back turnovers. He lowered his shoulder. Yeah, he did right there. A good job of moving his feet to stay in, in front. Oh, bad decision. Adams got in the air. He does that well. He jumps better than anybody I've seen in the state of Colorado for a long time. But that was ill-advised. And now Arapaho with a buck 20 left will have the basketball again, trailing by one. There's the first jump pass he throws. There's another one coming back from Calvert. And here's the second one that gets him in trouble. And that's, that's a tough thing. That's a good job to show by Jensen over on the wing. Cause him to pull that ball down, but I just feel like they're in such a rush. And this is such a pressure-packed moment right here. These kids have been waiting their whole lives to play for a state title. And, and, and it's within reach for both of these teams. So there's so much pressure on these young men. Yeah, for a lot of kids, they'll never play basketball again other than the intramurals pick up. This will be it. But this is something that if you're able to hoist that trophy, like we've talked about several occasions, you could still call your buddies up 20 years from now, and you'll remember the day that you were state champs of Colorado. And you will. Oh, 20, absolutely. 30, 40, 50 years. The memories will not fade. 57, 56. Chaparral. Coker to Jensen. He's got 26. Great move, and Arapaho takes a one-point lead. Great up fake. That was a set play. And now Calvert calling out play number one. Inside a minute to go. Calvert leads in. He can't hit. Rebound to Arapaho. And this is where the foul count hurts Chaparral. They had only five fouls. Arapaho will not be shooting a one and one yet. 58 50. Warriors by one, 42 seconds left. Here's Jensen posting up in the middle. He got Elliott on the up fake. Absolutely. And such great footwork he has not to travel. Gets the easy two. Oh, a turnover. Coker turned it over. Elliott to Adams. He nearly traveled. Still 25 seconds. Chaparral's got to compose himself. And a timeout, Rob Johnson. Coach Johnson says, let me help you out with that. <laughs> timeout. You know what? These kids, both sides, have handled themselves so well. Such enormous pressure. Big time. Coker leaves his feet. As strong, as strong bodied as he is. Just pick that ball up. If you have to burn one, then you burn a timeout. But got to make sure you don't throw that ball away. Well, if you're Chaparral, Calvert or Adams, you assume. But let's not forget Malone. Malone, I mean, you also got Reese Elliott. So there are options out there. Because Malone can beat you off the Absolutely. dribble. We saw him do it late Absolutely. in the game against Highlands Ranch on Thursday in the semis. Uh, they're going to have to spread the floor. But if you're a Arapaho, do you come out in some kind of matchup zone here to keep, keep, keep it kind of bundled up? I mean, not typical of Dan Snyder. No. 22 seconds left. Snyder has put Taven Sparks, one of his top defenders, back in. Coker's had Calvert most of the game. Bobzine has had Adams, but now they're going to switch. Bobzine is on Calvert, and they'll put Sparks on the explosive Adams. 22 seconds left to wrap a hole by one. And a tough pass. Bobzine out of bounds. Which way? 
They called, they called, they called a, a foul. foul on him? They called a foul on Bob Zine. It's a one and one at the other end for Chaparral. This is a heads up play by Bob Zine to knock that ball out. There's no foul on that play. He just bumps him a little bit, but let it play out. There's no advantage either way. It's still going to be Chaparral ball coming back the other direction. I agree with you. Going to the line, Corey Calvert, 5 of 5 tonight, 13 of 13 in his last two ball games, 77% during the regular season. And he ties it up. My heart is beating right now, man. I, I, you know what? We're not playing, and, and we're My shaking. hands are sweaty. I, I mean, I feel like I'm out there. The intensity is so crazy in here right now. Everybody is standing in the Coors Event Center. Calvert gives Chaparral a lead. They're going to find Jensen. He picks up the dribble. Bob Zine drives, wild shot. It goes! And it counts! Oh, Jack Bob Zine has hit one shot the whole night. What kind of guts does that kid have? That is incredible right here that he would even think to take the shot, but he catches, turns the corner. Calvert's a little bit late getting over and pushes there, and a great job of just getting it up there on the glass by Bob Zoom. Huge. And he completes the three-point play. 11 seconds left. A two-point lead for Arapaho. What a remarkable game. Back and forth, back and forth. And you watch Bob, Bob Zine, he sees the closeout a little bit out of control by Calvert there. He closed out out of control, so he turns the corner. Watch this lane he has. Look at that. You see the push and the reach. You know, it's a good call and a great finish. These kids know each other well. They're both in the South Metro area, Rapaho, Centennial, Littleton area. Chaparral's down in Parker. Only about 15, 20 minutes separate the two schools. They play together against each other and together probably somewhat in the summer. And it is a two-point game with 11 seconds left. You, you can't get it any better than this. I mean, this is a, a knockdown, drag him out, back alley, not holding any punches. Both these teams are going at it. You know, we're all going to watch the tournament starting next week. Congrats again to Colorado, if you didn't hear. They beat Arizona. They're going to the NCAA, AA, uh, NCAA tournament. You'll be, you'll be hard-pressed to find a better basketball game played next weekend than the one we've witnessed for almost 32 minutes Absolutely. Tonight. This arena's rocking, 11,000 strong. I mean, we can't ask for a better atmosphere. And we'll know what's going on in 11 seconds, unless we have some added time for overtime. That's a distinct possibility. Here's Adams. Down the lane. Adams off. Loose basketball. Shots hit! Oh my goodness! Kaiser hit it! We will go to overtime. I don't know if you think he saw the hoop. We got a timeout. It's not over. We got over. a timeout. It's not over with. It's not over yet. But what? With 11 it's seconds, why, why were they dashing down the court? 11 seconds is an eternity. Will Kaiser, I don't think he ever saw the rib. No, he just turned around and hit it. But right here, with 11 seconds, we're out of control. We don't know what's happening. But Kaiser finally gets it, just turns and puts it up, catches the front of the iron, and it sticks. Now they put a decent amount back on the clock, 2.1. It's a good thing it's not the NBA where they could advance the ball on the timeout. At least they have to go full court for this, but we're, they're out of control there. Taven Sparks takes what looks like could be a charge, but Kaiser just an unbelievable shot. Look, he's like, he can't believe he fuck it. Oh my goodness. That, I mean, he turned and, and he fired a line like drive. Like he's supposed to do. I yeah, mean, he knew I he mean, had to get it up. Right. He, the internal clock in his head. It's the biggest shot of that young man's life right there. 
61. Wow. 61. I've run out of words. <laughs> officials have shown that they're going to wrap this game to the end. They're not going to just let anything go. So if you're Chaparral, you've got to be solid. Don't stick your hand in anywhere it shouldn't be. Play solid defense here. Force Arapaho to take a tough shot you, you for can, the win. You can make two passes with 2.1. Absolutely. Bob's been going deep for Walsh, and it's broken up. Oh Adams my gosh! Went in. Oh my gosh! I don't think it would have counted, <laughs> but Adams almost threw it in from 85 feet. I didn't <laughs> Adams I didn't almost threw that thing in from 85 I feet. Didn't think he would reach. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's looking at it going, yeah, I got it online. OG, state title game. Thirty-two minutes would not settle the 5A state title game, and we're thrilled it is not. This game has been unbelievable. 61-61, Chaparral and Arapaho will play at least four more minutes. We just got a, a message. Uh, a friend of mine let me know that Zach Coker, who all he's done uh -huh. in the basketball game for Arapaho is score 18 points. He had a horrible stomach flu earlier today and took two IVs. Would you know it by how he's played? They're going to re-jump it. That's an excellent call. They both got to the ball at the same time. If you're not sure, do it again. That's yeah. an excellent call. And there's too much at stake here. Wow. I, I, so Bob Zeen, who's probably the last guy on the floor for Arapaho at that point, you think's going to shoot it, gets a three-point play. And then at the other end, Will Kaiser turns and, and, and semi-shoots it in the general direction of the hoop to tie it up with two seconds left. The other guy you don't expect to shoot at that time. Right. And they both come through. So again. Four minutes of overtime, tied at 61. Chaparral had a double-digit lead twice early in the third. Here's Malone. Checked by Sparks, playing with four fouls. Look Adams at, look at Bob has four Zine. fouls for Chaparral. Bob Zine is just Ding up Adams right now. Left-handed runner, wild shot. And the rebound to Taven Sparks. What a strong rebound by Sparks. Gamble by Calvert. It's five on four for a moment. That, that nearly was the fifth on Adams. The officials gave him a break. You've got to be smarter than that. If it's a turnover, it's probably his fifth. Into Jensen, who's got 29. He misses, and the rebound pulled away by Adams. He's a jet. And now they're going to call a foul on Bobsey. You see, you see a teammate settling him down. And that's five on Bob Zeen. Yeah, that's a good, he bumped him with a hit there. Tough call, but was a foul, but 
I'll tell you what, tough as nails, Jack Bobsey, and that kid has deep been all over since the, the quick start. And, and you know what? His from Adams, he is just a, a demon on the defensive end. This isn't his best sport. He's an all-state lacrosse player. He's going to the University of Hartford on a ride. That, that, that's why he's as tough as he is. Adams misses the front end. A minute four into overtime. He misses both, but the rebound Comes away to 25, Kaiser. Calvert does not get the roll. Coker's foul. And that is five on Kaiser. He's gone. That was a foolish foul. Absolutely, no reason for that. It's still early enough, it's a tie game. There's nothing, nobody hurt here, but Calvert gets a little bit too low for that shot, so there's really no angle. And you see Coker doing a nice job being physical with that board. Gotta work that left hand in there. It's too bad, Kaiser played a, a heck of a game. Great game. He'll foul out with 11 points. And he is the reason we're in overtime. Absolutely. One and one. Chaparral, eight fouls. Arapaho has 10. And Coker, with the two IVs earlier today, has his 19th point. Would you expect anything less? I mean, honestly, would you expect the kid not to come out here and battle? One-point lead for Arapaho, 62-61. Calvert leans in. Pretty move. Chaparral by one. Got to go back inside to Jensen. He's, he's hanging out on the wing. And he's a good player from out there, but inside there's no answer for him. Yeah, I would find number five on the block. Trotman needs to dribble around there and, and get an angle to get that entry pass. Coker, missed the layup, gets it back. And it falls. That is strong right there. Coker would not be denied. Offensive board. Calvert. What a shot by Calvert. Didn't look for a shot most of the night. He deferred. He's looking for it now. Chaparral back up 65-64. 118 to go. Jensen. Sparks will lean in. He has it blocked. Block. Coker for three. And a long rebound to Sparks. Inside a minute to play. And Coker had the pass picked off. Tough angle to get that pass in. Again, Arapo, if they foul, it's two free throws for Chaparral. And there's the foul on Coker. That's his third. And Calvert, who has been magnificent from the line, can give Chaparral a three-point lead. Talk about Coker with these two IVs, but look at him muscle his way in, step up and through, misses, grabs the board, and finishes strong with the left hand. And Calvert just starting to dominate this game. Talked about him having to make shots for this team to win. Coming down the stretch, he's attacking. And knocking down free throws. Eight of eight in the semis. He's eight of eight tonight.
Nothing but the bottom. Three-point Chaparral lead. 67-64. All of a sudden, Calvert just turning it up on the offensive end. He and Adams have 17 each. Yeah, Adams got most of his in the first half. In fact, Adams has just three points in the second half, and he's played a good portion of the second half in overtime with four fouls. Well, and he's been the beneficiary of a couple non-calls. And typically said Arapaho doesn't go quick. 38 seconds left. Quick two or look for a good three. That, that's always the question in these situations. I, I, I'm in the old school of quick two unless one of your best three-point shooters gets a wide open look, gets a quick two, put the onus on Chaparral to make free throws on the other end. Get the quick two, quick foul, try to deny the ball from getting in Calvert's hands, and get one of those other guys up at the free throw line and give yourself a chance. Rob Johnson has brought his top rebounder back in, Mitch Parsons, the tight end, 42. So again, 38 seconds left. Arapaho basketball trailing by three. Checked by Malone. Poker drives and Sparks is fouled. That's a good look and a good call on the foul. Parsons comes over. He doesn't go straight up. He goes for the block, but you see Taven Sparks go to the bucket. And look at this pass by Coker. Nice bounce pass and a good job of being aggressive by Taven Sparks. Almost gets a chance for a three-pointer. Now he's got to go to the line and knock him down. First point of the night for Sparks. Let Dan Snyder tell us, because everybody knows their role on my basketball team. Sparks, a rebounder and a terrific defender. He does not look to shoot much. Absolutely not, but when he gets a chance there, he makes a smart decision. And the rebound of Coker. Two-point game. 17 seconds left. They got to find Jensen. Coker leans in, he hits to tie it up. Here comes Calvert. Five to go. Calvert for the win. Off the iron, the oh! top. It counts. Oh, it counts. Adams got it. Adams, Adams with the tip. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Up above everybody. Unreal. <laughs> We talked about his leaping ability. Wow. At barely over six feet, he had his elbow over the rim to win the state title for Chaparral in overtime. That is incredible. See his family over there, but tremendous athlete, man. That is an incredible, an incredible play. Oh my gosh. But if you're if you're a Rappahoe, you gotta be stunned at this point. Gets, gets his 19th point. Shot. Oh my goodness. It looks like it's going with second overtime. I mean his face was all up in the net. No block out. He comes flying in. And look at this. Oh my goodness, man. That is incredible. Let's see where he came from. Uh, not going to tell on that look. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. He's in the left corner. He's, he was out at half court. Oh, no, As the no, shot was going up, he circles around Trotman. He's out by half court when, when Corey Calvert starts to shoot that ball. He circles around Trotman and just takes off. Remarkable. I have to tell you something. I did 10 years of the NBA 
I've done 20 years of college basketball plus. That is one of the greatest games and certainly finishes I have ever witnessed at any level. Uh, any sport, to me, any sport. It's, it's one of the most emotional. I mean, these kids were going at it back and forth. All the storylines, Coker being sick all day, him coming up with answers after answers. A, a offensive mean, rebound, <laughs> and then he drives in with with 10 seconds left to tie it again. I mean, just amazing effort by all these young men. And this will go down in history as probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest game ever in 5A history. I, I just can't imagine one better. And this is incredible. Feel for that young man right there. He was outstanding tonight. Talking about Shane Jensen. Wow, speechless, absolutely wow. speechless. Fortunately, Mark Stout is not Mark. Wow, where did he come? I know you've seen Josh Adams jump. Where did he come from, Coach? I have no idea. Half court, I don't know. He, he's unbelievable. He gets four fouls in the third quarter. Not loses his mind as he always does. And he finds a way to calm down and make the biggest play of his life. And it's just uh, so exciting to see him do that. You had a lot of guys step up in this game. You know, we thought that Arapaho was going to have scoring throughout. But well, what about this team game? They are so good. We can't guard all their guys. They're just so many weapons. They're so strong and athletic. And then to have Reese shoot the way he did and Malone. And then obviously Corey started doing his thing. It, what a great high school basketball game. Both teams played really well. Did you ask Corey to take over the game, so to speak, or was that his decision? That's him. That's him. He knows when. He knows the right time to do that, and he felt it. And it's hard sometimes to step back and say no because he's so good about it. So we just let him go, man. Yep. Did some of this championship start on the court in Oak Creek, Colorado, at, yeah. at Sorocco High? Yeah, no, we never had any up there. It's a wrestling school, actually, and uh, loved it, though. Great place to be from. And, to bring this to uh, even to be a part of Oak Creek is a big part for me and my family. So, congrats. Thank you very much, Mark. Let's go back to Drew. Well, congratulations to Rob Johnson and Chaparral. Calvert, 26 footer, no go. Adams tips it in. I mean, with less than probably three tenths on the clock. Tip it, goes, and then the light goes on. I mean, that is incredible. Came from half court, and it just shows you just keep playing. Just keep playing, you never know what's gonna happen. He finishes the game. Right now, he is circling around at the half court mark, and goes up. And, and how many guys I, can put their body that high in the air? And be in control to actually, not just slap it, but to control tip it and get it to go for you. Just an amazing, amazing play. All adjectives and then some apply. Man, I, I've oh, never, I, I, I've I, never. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Mark Stout. He's with Corey Calvert. Get his perspective. Mark. We do want to get your perspective. You took the shot. Were you looking? Did you even know what happened? I mean, I took the shot, missed it, and then I see Josh coming out of nowhere. Tips it in with his left hand. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Clock hit zero, right, pretty much as the ball went through. It was just amazing, amazing feeling. You know, I, I just asked Coach about you kind of taking over the game. I watched maybe some point in the third quarter, it looked like you, you made a decision. When did that happen? I mean, I was just trying to help our team. We were struggling to get some buckets in the third quarter, and I just thought I'd be a little more aggressive and try to help my team win, and I was just going to the rim and trying to make plays. Just going down the lane. Yep, going down the lane. They were taking a lot of charges, so it was kind of frustrating earlier in the game, but I was able to avoid the charges at the end of the game, so it was good. Talk about you guys as a tandem one last time. I know this is the way to end things, but what a guard duo. I mean, it's been really special playing with him this whole year. We played together last year, too, but, I mean, it's just amazing. He's a great player, and I've just had the great privilege of playing with him, and I'm going to miss playing with him a lot. He's a great player. Congrats. Good luck at BYU. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Drew? All right, Mark, thank you. Corey Calvert didn't take a ton of shots tonight, but he did look to take the game over late. And what Corey Calvert did to help his team win is go 9 of 9 to the free throw line. Finished up with 17 big points, but he was, you know, we, we're used to seeing him as a jump shooter. He was forcing the issue down the lane, not settling for the jump shots. He was going into the paint, trying to impose his will on the game and, and was able to do that towards the end and 
I mean, nine for nine from the free throw line speaks for itself. Anytime you know you can knock down those free throws, got to go in there and try to create contact and at least get to the line. Now let's check in again. Mark Stout has uh, the man who can skywalk a little bit. Well, Josh, you need to redo your highlight reel, I guess, as of uh, tonight, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Um, that's the biggest play of my career. Uh, couldn't have come at a better time. I'm glad I could do it for my team. Where were you? Take us through it, the anticipation to get to the hoop. I mean, I saw we, we got the ball to Corey. That was our plan. He's been feeling it. That's the shot he hits seven out of ten times. I had confidence in him, but I also had his back. And when I saw that shot go up, forget about the four fouls. I have to do what I have to do for my team. I saw it come off, and I uh, just made a play on it. And, it's amazing. This is Josh Adams, isn't it? This, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. This, this is definitely me. Uh, I'm just speechless right now. I, I can't tell you how happy I am. You're a basketball player. That's all you do. This. I saw your brother came down. It's got to be emotional. Oh, uh, it's very emotional. I'm trying to trying to hold it back right now. Uh, I made that tip. The first thing I do is make sure the horn went off. Second thing, find my brother. I mean, he's been. I would be nowhere without my brother. My brother, he, he's everything to me. Uh, with, I can't, he's pushed me, he's, he, he, got, he gets me up at nine o'clock in the morning, takes me to the gym. That play is him. That's him and me. That's my brother, and I love him. We'll see you at Wyoming. Yes, sir, definitely. I'll, I'll be doing the same stuff up there too, hopefully in the national title. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, you can see the resemblance. Yeah. His brother plays at Western State. Emotions. That's what's the, what the that's awesome part what. is. That, that is awesome. Raw, I mean, real emotion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and what a great moment for him. And it's, and it's funny because he says, that's the greatest uh, play I've made. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And I know he's made a lot of great ones, but right. I think so. State title tip in in overtime. Absolutely. You can't, can't ask for a better play. And coming back from what he's dealt with in the game, four fouls, uh, Having to be really careful. Very close to very a Very close to getting five, getting put out of the game with five fouls, but just held on and held on. And that's a hustle play yeah. right there. I mean, you saw where he was. He started out by half court. That is a flat-out hustle play. And a guy that wants to try to do something, he was able to get his hands on it and, and make a nice controlled tip. Yeah, you, you split hairs when you try to determine why one team comes out on top. The... Uh you know, the natural thing, obviously, and the cliche would be both schools obviously deserve to, to hoist that trophy. But Reese Elliott, especially early in the game, hit a bunch of threes, so much focus on Calvert, so much focus on Adams, even Malone. And Reese Elliott was terrific. He's with Mark Stout. He's the captain of the 5A champs. How does that feel? It uh, feels great, man. Uh, just couldn't have done it without all my teammates. Uh, they really came through. Josh had a great tip at the end. Keezer. Keezer had a great finish at the end of the first qu uh, fourth quarter. You know, it feels great. It's the greatest feeling in the world. And, you know, you always dream about that as a kid, and now I'm finally here. And, you know, Josh, you dream about having that last second shot to win the championship, and it just happened to be in overtime, and he got it in. Has he ever jumped over you? Uh, many times, actually. Many times. Dunk competitions, you know, I lob it up there. He, he's a freak of nature. Uh, love him. And, you know, if anyone can make that play in the state, it's him. He's the only kid. Reese, did you feel like you needed to score in this game tonight? Absolutely not. I had faith in my teammates the whole time. You know, they just kicked it to me when I was open, and I hit down some big shots. But, you know, I'd really just got to uh, give a lot of credit to my teammates, you know. It's hard to make shots if you don't touch the ball. So Corey and Josh and Brandon Malone just found me at the right times, and they did a really good job tonight. You'll remember this forever, Savory. Uh, forever. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Let's go back to Drew. Another terrific young man, Reese Elliott, knocks down four triples, finishes with 16 points. And he was part of the uh, fire brigade in the, in the first half when literally Chaparral couldn't miss. He really did, he really was, and, and only pulled off, just hit, just missed one shot. Still made a couple more after that, but he's a guy that we talked about early, had to have a role in this game. It wasn't just gonna be Adams and Calvert, he had to have a role. Keezer had a big role.